Before I get started, beginning with this video, and hopefully continuing with all future Origins videos, in cooperation with Esclair Studios, I will be giving away a sponsored single character shadow box of the character featured in this Origin video. If you would like to have a chance to win this beautiful and unique artwork of A, the instructions are quite simple. Just like the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. Then, leave a comment letting me know who your favorite Genshin Impact character is. Once the video reaches 5,000 likes, I will randomly select a winner from the comments and announce that winner on my Twitch stream. You will not need to be present at the stream to claim your prize, but you will need to respond to my message within 7 days or it will be rewarded to another. If you'd rather not leave things up to fate and would like to dress your walls with their amazing and beautiful artwork, head over to their website. A link has been provided in the description and use code Tevat Historia to save 10%. Thank you again to Esclair Studios for sponsoring this giveaway. Now, on with Archon Origins, Raiden A. The people of Inazuma have always known these constants, thunder and lightning, wind and rain, light and the sea which surrounds them, and finally, her almightiness, the Raiden Shogun. Children born of the Nation of Eternity grow up hearing tales of the Electro Archon from ages past, those of battles won and Archons or deities slain. But unlike many other great tales, rife with overstated details intended to fill the listener with a sense of suspense and excitement, the Raiden Shogun's tales require no such embellishment. The remnants of the God of Eternity's resolve to bring about an unchanging eternity to Inazuma are clear for all to see. Like a battle scar, Inazuma bravely wears these marks as a badge of honor, a reminder of her mightiness such that the people trust in her promise that the traditions and inner workings of Inazuma will remain forever unchanging, passing from one generation to the next. While the tales of her glories are renowned, the stories which tell of her hardships are not. And so, by contrast, even though to the people the Shogun's promise of eternity represents tradition and the knowledge that what one enjoys today will be enjoyed by those that come after them, for Raiden A, eternity is defined by what she's lost. The Archon War. For many who lived in that time, this era was one of horrible loss and tragedy. For A and her sister, Mikoto, this would be no different. During those trying times, A's role was that of samurai. The scene of war and death was her dominion, and while challenging even for one as powerful as she, A resisted the horror of war's after effects in order to protect her sister and those closest to her. The two sisters approached the Archon War with their heavenly principle in mind, a promise to provide an undying eternity, but such a prize could not be won without a great personal sacrifice. This would be a thankless existence for A, because only a chosen few had any clue that Raiden A and Raiden Makoto were two different people. To everyone else, they were a single entity, the Raiden Shogun. 
Why they carried on this facade is rightfully unknown, but it is likely this was a plan they came up with together in order to ensure that they would not have to fight one another for the title of Electro Archon before the Archon War's resolution, a battle which would result in the death or exile for the loser. Indeed, this would hardly have been a fair contest, as the one in these times known to the people as Baal was no fighter. Manifesting the unsharpened Muso Ishin as a symbol of the peace she desired, Baal represented the promise of eternity. But it was Beelzebul's power, A's power, which brought faith in the ideal to the people of Inazuma and unimaginable fear to their enemies. If Beelzebul was the blade of Inazuma, Baal was its soul. Kind and gentle, she was much more concerned with the here and now compared to A, whose outlook was always on what's next on the horizon. But this isn't to say that the concept of loss and the erosion which comes with time was not considered by Meikoto. Quite the contrary. It's precisely what gave her such an appreciation for living in the now. The fleeting nature of a mortal life isn't unlike lightning. It's here for but the briefest of moments, and then gone. A belief she described time and time again to her sister. At the time, A couldn't see the forest for the trees, but the concept was not totally lost on her. This was because Mikoto and her friends were very important to A. Their presence is what gave her such incredible will, and for them, she would perfect her arts with the blade happily, and act as Mikoto's body double and shadow assassin when it served eternity. A was central to protecting Inazuma, but she did have periods of time where she was able to enjoy a normal life, spending time under the Sakura tree, playing Karuta with Meikoto and their close friends, Sasayuri, Mikoshi Chio, and Kitsune Saigu. A's character made her a rather predictable player, and thus the pastries Kitsune Saigu prepared for the winners were never A's to enjoy. But if there's anything A revels in, it's a victory following a great challenge and asserts which just so happened to be A's guilty pleasure. And so, like anything else, she dedicated herself to claiming the prizes which eluded her. By day, if she had the time, she would pester Meikoto or Chio to matches, intent on honing her skills the same way she would practice her skills with the blade. By night, she would recite the poetry inscribed on the cards out loud. She did this until at last her efforts paid off. One by one beneath that Sakura tree, she defeated each of them until, in an unusual example of A living in the moment, she defeated the Tengu general Sasayuri. And just at that moment, they all heard a loud whoop sound, which had originated from A. Surprisingly, in her excitement, her tough exterior broke down if only for the briefest of an instant, causing her arms to shoot into the air as she let out a nearly involuntary cry of joy. Shocked at the uncharacteristic display, Mikoto and the others erupted into laughter, which of course triggered A to bring her arms back down and regain her composure just as quickly and awkwardly as she had lost it. Her attempt to keep cool was for naught, however. She bit into her sweet prize, but its taste was just as satisfying as her victory had been, and the smile which began to show on her face again betrayed her composure. But A didn't care. She reveled in her win and truly enjoyed living in the moment in the company of those closest to her beneath that Sakura tree. Unfortunately, these happy memories for A would become nothing more than a reminder of better times. As the Archon War raged on, many gods and deities met their end by her blade. But her strike did not always come before the grains of sand found within the glass which embodies the ironclad rule of time had fallen. And since there is no way to go back, what is done cannot be undone. Time is the ultimate enemy of eternity. The Tengu general was first, struck down by the deity of Watatsumi Island as it pushed its advantage against the lands of eternity. What mercy might have been reserved for the serpent god Orobashi was then forfeit, 
In her rage, A struck down the creature with extreme prejudice, leaving the lands of Inazuma forever scarred. Through this victory, eternity was served, but it could not bring back what was lost. Time Zero came next for Mikoshi Chiyo. The battles of the Cataclysm were horrific, and so too were the monsters of this era. A corrupted beast of sin consumed Chiyo during one such encounter. But she, like A, was a tenacious and competent fighter. She killed the creature from the inside, cutting her way to freedom. But the damage was done. The darkness contained within the creature's blood, combined with the horrors she had witnessed, took her mind and transformed her body until she turned her blade against A. In the ensuing fight, Chiyo's sword arm and one horn were cloven. Likely, she only survived as a result of A's unwillingness to deal the final blow. And so she retreated to the forest, tormented by her newly twisted form and the pain of her wounds. Chiyo's final fate is not known, but her defeat helped to ensure the ideal of eternity, but it would not bring back what was lost. Time's cruelty knew no bounds, and its gaze next was cast upon Kitsune Saigu. Much of the details of her disappearance are completely unknown, but it is said that she was consumed by dark will, breaking down her body and her mind. But as the darkness consumed her physical form, she pleaded for her memories to be spared, and so her memories became one with the earth, giving a brief existence to another centuries later. Saigu as the fox priestess was highly mischievous in life, but her final words to A were meaningful, though we know not for certain if they ever reached her ears. Do not be blinded, do not waver, keep walking the path that you believe in. And with those words, eternity was once again served, but could not bring back what was lost. Time relentlessly marched forward, and its insatiable hunger continued, with Saigu's loss still fresh in her mind. A barely given time to process her grief, she found the Muso Ishin in her hands, passed to her by her sister as she lay dying. That very day, the blade which represented peace would taste the crimson life force of those who oppose eternity, but it would do nothing to quench the thirst of A's grief. There would be no funeral, no ceremony, no closure. To the people of Inazuma, the Raiden Shogun was a single entity, and so tragically, none would mourn the death of their gentle, peace-loving Archon. A alone would bear this grief, as the mantle of Archon passed on to her, her resolve now all the stronger in lieu of all that happened. If eternity is not achieved, Chiyo, Sasayuri, Saigu, and Mikoto died for nothing, and thus eternity was served once more, but will not bring back what was lost. A had become the Archon of Inazuma, the Raiden Shogun, and yet she was still the Shadow Assassin. Perhaps this is why she chose to wear the ornamental fan, once belonging to Mikoto, behind that of her own hair ornament and flowers, a resolute way of honoring her sister's memory and a reminder of why she must strive forward towards eternity. There was now nothing between the Archon and Time's gaze. There was only her, and Time, as A had learned, is the ironclad rule of existence. You cannot stop it, and if she were not destined to be killed in combat, despite all she is capable of, erosion will eventually claim even her and so A spent a great many years concerned of how to overcome even the intangible concept of time. Then, as if by a stroke of good fortune, or perhaps it was fate, the answer appeared before A. A mysterious technique lost to time provided the promise of creating an undying puppet. It could be designed identical to A, such that eternity could be served through that vessel for all time, and no one would be the wiser. Replicating an arrangement similar to that which A and her sister had fabricated so long ago. This was eternity. This was the solution. The guarantee that the Raiden Shogun could preside over Inazuma for eternity. 
And so her research began. Countless experimentations ensued. Failed prototypes were discarded. Immeasurable time and resources were consumed. But finally, a successful prototype was designed. It was built male and given the name Kuni Kazushi. A locked its abilities and cleared its memory, releasing it into the world as an ordinary human with hopes he would live out a normal life. Using what she had learned with her successful prototype, A at last created the perfect puppet. There it sat on the table, a blank slate, listening to A talk about eternity, Inazuma, its people, and about Makoto. The Raiden Shogun puppet would be tasked by A to defend Inazuma from all enemies of eternity. Even if this meant she may become an enemy of eternity herself, it would be worth it so long as Inazuma would be safe. Because where there is progress, there must be loss. Each passing generation would know the same Inazuma. Their customs, traditions, even the swordcraft techniques developed and passed on by A herself. And they would all know the glory and protection of the almighty Raiden Shogun. With Eternity's solution now prepared, his plan was to use the art of soul binding, taught to her by the peculiar and clever Yae Miko. Through this technique, she would forsake her physical form and bind her consciousness to the Muso Ishin and reside alone in a state of solitary meditation within the plain of Euthymia. But there was still one final matter to attend to, the Gnosis. She would have no need for it in her isolation. It could not be left behind without great consideration. Her first thought was to modify the Gnosis into a device not unlike a battery. But despite her greatest efforts, all attempts to alter the Gnosis failed. Modification was impossible, and so her only option was to entrust it to someone, or, if not trust, at least someone who knew the value of it well enough not to sell it to the highest bidder. Yaimiko was certainly not someone to ever lose out on a transaction, and there was at that time no trade one could make in A's mind which would be equal to the value of the Gnosis. And so, the Gnosis of the Electro Archon was left in the care of the new High Priestess of the Narukami Shrine. When A returned to the Raiden Shogun puppet, it had but one question for her. There is no turning back from forsaking your form. Do you regret nothing? Not one to stand on ceremony. He responded, Your existence is my answer, and transferred herself into the sword, leaving the mortal plane behind. In her eternal meditation, Aya has spent the centuries with her focus turned to preventing the natural erosion of time upon her being. She will not allow herself to forget all which came before, the good times and the bad. But since the good is far more forgiving to recall, she often thinks of her days beneath that sakura tree. Though, none remain now to sit beneath its branches playing karuta. When A remembers those days, she wishes that time might stop forever. And that's the origins of Raiden A. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so that you are notified when my next video goes live. And check out my Twitch stream to join in on lore discussions and share your theories. Thanks for watching Tevod Historia. May the seven guide you, travelers.